uh, Season 1, Episode 3. But before I do it, uh, Drop It Tuesday's Meghan Markle has accused the Queen of the UK as being a racist. No, that would have been Prince Philip. He's former SS youth and is as eugenically racist as you can get. To be honest, I have not been paying the slightest bit of attention uh, with what's going on with the royals. I know, you know, that there's been this and that said about them. And there was an interview with them and all of that. But, you know, they're not mine. <laughs> Um, I, I don't really care, you know, um, I'm sorry, drop a tooth. Um, you know, you get to have some of those, uh, some of that because they're kind of yours, but they're not mine. Uh, I got my own problems in my country. Uh, I can't deal with uh, what's going on with other ones. And, and for the most part, I just don't care. I just don't care. Uh, aside from, you know, was Prince Andrew involved in screwing children, uh, with Jeffrey Epstein and all of that, that I care about. But I don't think we're ever going to find out the truth if he did. I don't think that's ever going to happen. So I really just don't pay much attention to that. Another shadow ripoff. Yes, I'm about to talk about that. This is a uh, birthday, uh, com uh, according to a 1972 calendar put out by DC Comics. Today is the birthday of Lee Travis, the Crimson Avenger. He debuted in Detective Comics number 20 in October of 1938, which preceded Batman by a few issues, and he was only a few months after Superman. Um, in some ways, yes, very uh, similar to The Shadow, um, similar also to The Green Hornet in terms of, you know, what he can do in his stuff. Uh, he did eventually, oh, hey, Jeanette, have a great night as, as yourself as well if you're headed out. Um, he did uh, eventually give up. Uh, the suit that you see here for uh, in World War II for a more colorful suit, cape, you know, with a hat and cape and everything. Well, he didn't have a cape, but, you know, costume like you'd expect a superhero to wear. Uh, he also had a sidekick, whom you're not seeing here, uh, who was uh, much like Cato of the Green Hornet, was also his valet and his, uh, his chauffeur. That guy, he was Asian. His name was Wing. It was always Crimson Avenger and Wing, and despite the fact that Wing was also the name he used in civilian life, you know, it was it was the golden age. It was a simpler time. Uh, you, nobody nobody apparently thought twice about uh, an Asian guy uh, who was this guy's you know sidekick and was driving the car. You know, uh, it's Asian. Uh, we don't care. You know, apparently that was the attitude then. So. But anyway, Woke, you can go ahead, try to cancel them if you want to. We all know you do. We all know you want to cancel them. So, uh, my review here, unlike uh, most reviewers, as always, I don't go over the plot and just rehash it, so it's pausing to say what I liked and didn't like. Uh, we'll just have to take it as read that if you come to this review looking for a uh, this video looking for a review you've already seen Superman and Lois Season 1, Episode 3, or you just don't care if it's spoiled. Um, nevertheless, for those, for safety's sake, for those of you who haven't, we should probably issue a... Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. All hands, prepare for incoming spoilers. Yes, it is a spoiler alert, and that is because I am a secret master of fandom. And that means that the fandom is strong with me. Now, this isn't a boast or a brag. This is just where you find yourself after having watched, read, and listened to over a hundred years' worth of science fiction. But the problem with Secret Masters of Fandom is that we are cursed. We cannot see this new stuff without seeing the whole century that came before. We discover that it's very little, frankly, that's very original. And sometimes it interferes with our ability to enjoy things. But I do not do outrage reviews because there are a lot of viewers on YouTube who are simply actors portraying outrage because outrage tends to sell. They hate everything with a knee-jerk reflex because their viewers like to see them hate things. But this causes a weird feedback loop between fans and popular reviewers where ultimately nobody likes anything. But I don't do that. If I like something, I'll tell you why in detail. If I dislike something, I'll tell you why in detail. Unlike other reviewers, I am the adult in this particular room. Uh, Drop Two saying you downloaded the uh, Shadow uh, radio shows from archive.org. Yep, free and legal. Absolutely, yes. There, um, everything archive ha archive.org has does uh, not in addition to just being able to download it. Uh, they have torrents. Um, there are uh, at least I'm, I know I'm permaseeding a very large torrent with all of the Dragnet radio series uh, in it. Um, so you can pull that down and permaseed like I'm doing. 
Um, I figure it's my duty to give back. Um, but you can always pull those down as torrents and then just seed forever like I'm doing. Um, I always I always push BitTorrent if you can because it, it's, it's A, it's a little hard to um, stop people from using. And B, it's kind of, you know, if you're doing what I'm doing, sort of giving back with the content and letting it stay up there forever. But yes, uh, Lee Travis was a bit like the shadow, not as much as you'd think. Um, you know, you can tell from the way that it looks kind of a ripoff. Um, but everybody was doing that to a certain extent. The entire golden age was just people ripping other people off. You know, Captain Marvel got into huge problems because it was too much like Superman, you know, so. Anyway, um, I'm not going to go into an extraordinary depth on this, which is probably too bad I have the time, very likely. It's only been less than an hour. <laughs> but uh, uh, the bad guys on this one now have got me scratching my head just a little bit. Uh, I'm wondering, do we have multiple bad guys? Is this all related to one subplot? One would hope it's related to the same subplot because uh, if you're going to have multiple subplots in only 15 episodes, it doesn't leave you a lot of time to really get uh, into one subplot or the other. So I, I hope that they're somehow related. I you know, don't know. Uh, if, if they are, they're doing a good job of allaying at least one of my fears that I had last week which was it looks like some kind of alternate universe story. And I've seen a lot of alternate universe stories, um, so it's hard to surprise me. Um, but if they're doing something like that with multiple villains, they have... Th this last one surprised me. I w did not see those villains coming, so good on that. I mentioned last week that I was no longer certain whether Tyler Hecklin's uh, costume, Superman costume, is all a muscle suit um and and uh you know drop a truth you'd mentioned in on social media that yeah it was the thing about it is this is three years ago when he bulked up to play a character in the movie um what the hell was it i can't see the name of the film on my uh in the movie bigger um he bulked up to play a bodybuilder uh, now, it's been three years, so, I mean, presumably he could have, you know, obviously not decided to keep up with that, you know, and gotten smaller. Uh, but if he has not, here is a man who does not need a muscle suit. <laughs> Put him in spandex and he will be just fine. Um, and there's lots of other pictures of him from that film. So if he's anything like that now, just, just, just. Get rid of the stupid muscle suit, whatever the hell he's wearing that looks like a muscle suit. Give him spandex like, you know, Chris Reeve had, and just leave it at that. Uh, you don't need to do these weird details and stuff that you got. You know, Chris Reeve was in spandex on a huge, gigantic screen with tons and tons of detail, and nobody thought it was wrong. There's nothing wrong with spandex, guys. There really isn't. Um, put him in spandex. It'll look better. Um, otherwise, if he's you know gotten considerably smaller than this uh time to put him on christopher reeve's superman diet and and get him bigger again uh drop two says i didn't, i said an augmented muscle suit no one has this. oh yeah the six-pack abs 100 percent of the time yeah that's clearly just drawn onto the suit no question about that i i think it's pretty obviously drawn onto the suit again forget that stuff guys just forget it don't get weird with the you know the heavily detailed costume and stuff just put him in spandex you know, if he's looking like this, just put him in the spandex. He'll look fine. You don't have to get with all those weird details and whatnot on the suit. Just put him in the spandex. He'll be fine. You don't have to get weird about this. So, uh, thanks for correcting me, though. Drop a truth. Still have to wonder why is uh, Clark wearing his glasses around the farm all the time? It just doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that? What would be the point of wearing glasses when you're, I mean, every, you know, he and his family all know who he is. He doesn't have to be wearing them at all. Why? You know, just keep them in a pocket in case somebody comes by. Which, you know, actually, honestly, you know, when you're working a farm like that, uh, visitors are largely few and far between. There's really no reason he has to wear those things when he's around uh, the farm. And, and again, I always just have to say, man, I'm sorry. I mean, call me old school, but put the damn trunks back on the costume. I know, people go, ha, 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 Superman's wearing his underwear on the outside of his shirt. No, 
It's not what he's wearing. It's not his underwear. It's trunks that were very similar to what um, strong men, circus strong men, uh, uh, circa the 1920s, 30s used to wear. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, honestly. Just give him back the trunks. I think it looks stupid without it. I think it always has. The car bomb. Oh, man. Um, this is a small town. The small towns don't get car bombs, right? The, the moment that there was a car bomb, uh, there should have been not just Lois and the editor uh, going around and wondering at that and stuff. That would have involved everybody in the immediate vicinity. You know, best thing I can describe this as, I was working at a... Um, summer stock theater one time i was believe it was the summer of 89 summer of 1989 and the it was a it was a dinner theater that was it wasn't an actual riverboat but it was made up to look as though it was a riverboat and so there was this upstairs area that would have been had it been an actual riverboat where it would have been you know cruise quarters and engineering stuff like that up up towards the top and that's where the kitchen and all of that stuff was and then there was an elevator that took it down one floor to take it onto the main floor which was where all of this uh, all of the uh, audience sat well this was a, a modified modified sort of freight elevator and every day they'd load up stuff sometimes we'd help because when you're doing summer stock you do more than one job and you'd load this sucker up with as much dishes as you possibly could, send it down, and then unload it and maybe do that a couple of times. Well, one time we loaded it up and the cable snapped. And this whole thing of dishes just came crashing down. And only one story was enough to turn every piece of glass in there, and it was all glass, into dust absolute dust fortunately there was no one riding on it at the time but there was a girl who was you know one of the uh, servers and stuff who was down below who was near enough at it that she got sprayed with glass dust and had to go to the hospital so here we are with all of this stuff that had crashed and everybody in town coming around to see what they could do to help and we're completely out of any kind of dishes uh, half the dishes probably for that evening we didn't have them anymore so this town got together and figured out how they were going to get us enough dishes to do the show that night that's the level of involvement you get in a small town like that you get a car bomb just, yeah, you get, that's going to be a huge deal. Not only that, it means that Lois is going to suddenly get all kinds of sympathy that she wasn't getting before. I mean, if she thought she was an outcast in the town getting a car bomb, that is going to make her, you know, part of the town right there. They are going to embrace her because of that. They don't get car bombs. You know, that happens. She's on to something. You're one of us. We're going to protect you. That's how those small towns actually work. Um, you know, they, when something bad happens, they pull together and it's amazing. You know, I thought, man, we're, we're screwed. I mean, how are, how are half our patrons going to eat? No, wasn't a problem. You know, three hours after that, uh, that elevator has dropped and shattered everything into glass. We had our, uh, our enough, uh, silverware and, and plates and whatnot to outfit the half that had died, that had been crushed. But it was really fascinating because, you know, you, you, you see in movies, you know, where, elevators will drop down the shaft and and maybe people will survive and stuff like that and i'm here to tell you man <laughs> one elevator loaded up with glass dropped one story and i am not in the slightest exaggerating shattered it all into dust just absolute dust as i say there was that one woman standing a girl standing at the bottom she wasn't hit by it or anything, wasn't clipped, but the dust flew up in this cloud and got her arm. And she had to go to the hospital, and they were taking out individual little dust pieces for like three hours. You know, it was crazy. Uh, Drop 2 says, Johnny Weissmuller's Tarzan. Yes, you're showing your age again. Oh, yeah, well, Johnny Weissmuller's Tarzan. Um, you know, I like uh, the two movies that are pre-code. Uh, I believe it's Tarzan of the Apes and Tarzan and his mate. They are pre-code. Um, that it means that it uh, predates the uh, Hayes office uh, code for uh, movies. 
basically, before code, you could do just about anything you wanted in movies. Post code, you had to clean it up quite a lot. Uh, Tarzan and his mate has um, nude scenes with Jane and some uh, loincloths that really should... I am unclear how they stayed on her body. <laughs> postcode uh the uh, where they lived turned into a giant tree house and jane started wearing mini dresses but pre-code are very interesting that way anyway that car bomb should have been a major turning point for lois um she uh she sh it should have been a huge turning point for the whole family um that everybody would have said oh my god you know you, this is this isn't crazy and you know we're going to come together that's what happens in small towns like that it isn't something where you, it blows up and you stare there and just looking at your car burning it's it's you're looking at your car burning and five million other people are coming around and the, the local fire department is about to pull up in three minutes um you know it's it's not something that just gets, oh, look, there's a car burning in the street. Isn't that interesting? No, <laughs> that ain't how it works at all in a small town. Um, that should have been a much bigger deal in terms of portraying how the townspeople react to something so utterly bizarre and outside of their experience. Because trust me, nobody in Smallville has ever gotten car bombed before. So. Ron Eli, good TV Tarzan. I don't really know that much about the TV Tarzan. I, I really only paid a hell of a lot of attention, to be honest, to Johnny Weissmuller, um, a couple of the others. But I prefer him more than anybody else in, in the pre-code uh, Tarzan movies, the, the two of them more than probably the post-code ones. Um, I've said before, working farm needs to be worked, and all the family should be working it. And we did see this time... Uh, Clark spending a minuscule amount of time uh, on working on a very old, ancient tractor that is not used today. Um, when my grandparents had their ranch, they had a tractor like that. It was sitting unused out in a field, which is where you dumped stuff that you never used. Oh, you might need to turn it over once in a while just in case, but that tractor is pretty much old, and it's not the sort of thing that's going to get used. Guys, you know, I like how you've been very kind to us with this show about those of us who live in this part of the country because Kansas is as close to Nebraska as doesn't matter. It borders us on the south. I like that you've been very kind to us, but you need to understand that modern agriculture is done with a lot of diesel-powered heavy equipment, a lot of it. Um, it isn't that tractor, and it isn't putting things attached to that tractor. It is combines. It is hay balers. You know, we've, we've got we've got equipment that can turn that can churn out hay bales that are the size of an SUV. You know, they can spit those out. Machines large enough to take to cut down grass, turn it into a bale of hay the size of an SUV or larger, and then spit that out. You know, that's the kind of heavy equipment that we use. Um, I don't use it. I live in the city, but I know you know rural area. That's the kind of heavy equipment that rural people use now. Um, and having Clark fiddling with that uh, tractor was a little too much um, stereotypical. You know, if you're really interested in how that stuff works, call me. Send me an email to call in at SYLRanch.tv. I'll get it, and I'll be happy to talk to you about the details. If this keeps going on next week, I will make certain to have pictures of what sort of equipment is used on modern farms. Modern farms are huge. Many of them can be larger. An individual farmer can have a farm larger than either the New York City or Los Angeles metro areas. You don't do, you don't tend that kind of land tract with the, the tractor that we saw. You, you tend that with large heavy equipment, diesel powered equipment. So call me guys. Um, we're still not really, from my mind, seeing enough uh, working of that farm. Um, you know, that should be something that is, yes, a full-time job for Clark if he didn't have superpowers, but should also involve the rest of the family, particularly his kids. They should be training to take over in case he dies or something. Drop 2 says, some of the old uh, Iger tractors were single piston. Uh, get a, a massage at the same time as the plowing. Oh, yeah, once or twice, you know, I, I actually drove a really old tractor that was, yeah, the seats were metal. Um, and uh, they didn't have springs. It was just a, uh, a piece of, 
you know, the seats like this, and you have another piece of metal underneath that would curve down and connect up to the rest of the tractor. So you you just bouncing everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but again, not something that I recall being used very often. Um, I know when that was used. I know when that was used. And I, I, that older tractor was only used when we were taking pieces of large hay bales or hay stacks uh, at the time and it had an attachment on the front that would it was basically like a giant fork and you would you know shove it into hay bale lift it up drive it over to where the cattle were in uh, the uh, corral and drop it off there and that was the only thing we really used that for um, certainly didn't use it to actually create the hay bale in question um, that was too big but using it to get chunks of it and over to the animals that were nearby yes we did that we did that but uh, in terms of what he's got in terms of the land that clark is tending he needs heavy equipment and and a lot of it so we should be seeing some of that um definitely always 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 love the relationship between jonathan and jordan they uh, uh they are the idealized so far the idealized version of my own kids kind of have each other's backs even when one appears to be horning in on the other one's territory where jordan was uh, getting on the uh, football team jonathan wasn't all down about it he wasn't no no i gotta have this this is my thing you shouldn't do this he wasn't doing that he wasn't doing that he outright said it towards the end of the episode when he was talking to clark um you know you should see jordan he he's doing really well with this it's helping him he needs to keep doing this it was great. I mean, it would have been so easy to turn this into a teen drama where it's, you know, brother versus brother, but it's not. And these guys do have each other's backs, and I love that. I, I'm liking seeing something that's not a freaking, you know, uh, uh, not a dysfunctional family. There are so many families on TV and movies that are just dysfunctional, and it would be so easy to write these as dysfunctional, but so far they have not. They've written them in what I think is a good way that's showing us that families can work this stuff out and it doesn't have to be dysfunctional and stupid. So, you know, yay for them so far. I li I'm really liking that. Uh, Drop two saying the flywheel engines of that time period were brilliant, so they should bring them back. I don't know much about the engines. I just remember sitting in that seat a few times. I didn't do much of it. I sat in it a few times, but... Um, at the time, my grandfather didn't really trust me um, to, uh, you know, to correctly use the attachment on the front to get things up and around. I was the guy who was basically opening and closing the gate to the corral and making sure that the cattle didn't get out. Um, so I don't know for sure what, uh, what, uh, what he had. He also had a, a really, really old antique uh, uh, tractor that didn't even have uh, rubber for tires. Um, it was big, wide, flat metal tires with uh, bumps in them so that it would have some traction. But it, that was really old, and I, I don't think that had been even turned over for decades. Um, it was some kind of antique that you know, somebody's grandfather, great-grandfather left out there in the field because that's what you do with stuff. There's nowhere else to take it, so you just leave it out in the field. My father has a... I believe, I want to say it's a 1943 Ford that's uh, in, uh, he, when he passed away, he has it, it's, it's still there. Um, that he was uh, uh, in, the, in the process of uh, uh, refitting and, and, you know, getting to working condition. Um, that was his very first car. Um, when he was like 15, 16 years old, he bought the thing, brought it home. It was a piece of junk. It went out to the field with all of the, where they had these cars that, you know, had turned into pieces of junk after you run them into the ground, drive them out to this field and leave them there because there's nowhere else to take it. You can't, where would you put it? So there was just this field with, you know, an area with old beat up cars in it. Uh, when my grandparents finally retired from cattle ranching, he dragged that sucker back to Nebraska and had been working on it right up until about his death off and on. Um, so that's sitting up there. I believe my, um, uh, I believe my uh, one of my grandnephews gets it. Uh, it's an interesting car. I, it can certainly be made into something that would be very vintage and very cool looking. But you take more money and know how than I certainly have. My dad had it. Anyway, like I say, like seeing this re this relationship between Jordan and Jonathan. Uh, I I like the fact that Jordan is, 
you know, by virtue of be getting on the football team, he is now uh, having, uh, you know, it's helping with what we've seen described as, uh, as you know, a disorder for um, you know, inter interacting with people. And I, I, that's cool, you know. Uh, him using it as a way to, you know, basically get with the bullies and say, okay, um, yeah, I shouldn't have kissed your girlfriend. That was uncool of me. Are we good? You know, and, and it's a way that males do that sort of thing, right? Uh, this is something that a lot of times in this kind of drama they'd get wrong because they don't understand the difference between the way males and females fight. You know, um, men usually, you know, if you have some kind of uh, disagreement, if you get into a physical altercation of some kind, somebody comes out on top and that's it. They're done. Nothing more is ever said of it ever again. Women are a little different. <laughs> they tend to remain vindictive. They, you know, it's not, if you have the fight, it isn't just over. It'll come up later. Um, this is one of those things that really, really, really frustrates men. We figure, okay, we've had the argument, we're done. And it turns out, you know, three months down the road, that, oh, you're bringing that back up again? Um, so to see this written the way that you would expect to see males handling this, where, you know, the bully gets tackled by Jordan and he helps him up, says, um, listen, dude, I'm sorry. It was not cool of me to do that. Are we good? Yes. Done. Great way to do it. Very well written, I thought. Drabazoo says, after my review of, of Superman Lewis, can we give an opinion of WandaVision, disappointing CGI final fest, uh, finale fest, that's MCU for you. I'll talk about it a little bit. Um, I'll tell you why. I won't talk about it much then. But Anyway, a uh, very good episode. You know, we always say it towards the end of any review. Is it any good? Um, yes, absolutely, as always, with for, as with the first two episodes, watch this show. My scale is one is passable, five is Hugo award worthy because frack the Emmys, they don't matter. I would certainly give this episode a nice solid four. Um, it's not going to win any Hugos, but at the same time, it is still a damn fine episode. It is the best live action Superman put to the large or the small screen since Richard Donard's 1978 Superman movie. And it's certainly the best Superman um, on uh, the... Um, the small screen since the DC animated universe in the uh, early 2000s. Um, again, it's it's not as good as Superman 1978. It's not going to win any Hugos, but it is still a damned good show. You should be watching it. I do remain optimistic, a little less nervous than I was last week or the week before, but still a little bit nervous because it's certainly still possible to frack this show up. And considering all the people who've been involved have been involved in Arrowverse, it is certainly possible to frack it up more. Uh, so I am cautiously optimistic, but I am still more optimistic uh, than maybe uh, I was two weeks ago, a week ago. If they continue on this and I start to feel like I can trust them, <laughs> more power. I, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. They're doing a good job so far with with a couple of minor exceptions. You know, the stuff that I'm talking about, totally nitpicky. You know, if you don't live around here and you aren't struck by the fact that, hey, wait a minute, that's not the way things are done. Or you haven't lived in a small town, you go, hey, wait a minute, that's not how people react when there's a fuck car bomb. You know, if you don't know these things, you know, you won't necessarily notice it. They're very small stuff. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.